Hello, in this video we will review how to use a zip file to be able to import it into a quiz in D2L. Normally these zip files are going to come from um, publishers test banks, so you'll be able to perhaps from your publisher's website download a zip file that will fit into D2L and then that will give you a quiz library that you can uh, choose questions from from your quizzes. To begin, you want to go to your publisher's website and search out the digital resources. Keep in mind, not all books have digital resources, but if your textbook comes from one of the major textbook companies, so Cengage, Pearson, Macmillan, McGraw-Hill, those type, then more than likely there probably are some um, uh, resources including maybe stock PowerPoints, test banks, those types of things. So you want to navigate to the website and you want to request an account for the website. So I'm using Cengage right now. I have a Cengage account. That is something that you would want to get from your Cengage rep or your Pearson rep. It's not something that Gordon can provide for you. So once you um, log into your account, you want to search for your book. So we'll try to find our book. And then once you adopt that book, you'll be able to see the supplemental access. So in this case, I'm using Cengage. I would go to my Instructor Companion site. And here I'm able to see Instructor Downloads. And from here, I have access to different things uh, from the book. So PowerPoints are here, um, and then they give you different test banks. So if I wanted to download the PowerPoints, notice that this is a zip file. So I'll just click on that, and it will download all of the PowerPoints for me. So after you complete the download, notice that it's in a zip file. When you open the zip file, that's when you're going to see all the individual PowerPoints. So from here, you can upload those into your D2L um, course to be used as supplemental resources. In this case, though, we want to focus on the test banks. So you want to use a D2L test bank if possible. Sometimes a D2L test bank isn't available. And if that um, is the case, then go ahead and try one of the other ones. Um, Oftentimes, Blackboard or Angel will still work in D2L. So if you don't see a D2L one, try the Angel or the Blackboard to see if it will still go in and fit. Those are just other LMSs, but sometimes they're, the format is so close that it'll work. So we're gonna download the D2L test bank. So we're just gonna save it to our computer. Once it is complete, notice that in Downloads, it has a zip file, so this is the zip file that we're using, and within the zip file there is all of the question sets. Now, this uh, is going to be a little bit tricky when we go to import it in because oftentimes people try to just import the whole zip file and that doesn't work. You have to import it chapter by chapter if that's how it's set up. So in this case, if I try to upload this whole zip file, it's actually going to fail. What I need to do is go ahead and take out each of these chapters. So I'm going to take each of these chapters out as their own zip file, and I'm just going to copy them to my desktop area for now. So that's a very important step, is you want to make sure not to try to put them all in there at one time as a zip file, because that's a zip file in a zip file, it's going to fail. So you want to go ahead and within the zip file, find each of the chapters, which are their own zip files, and just share those to your desktop or your uh, My Documents area. Now that we have the zip files on our computer, we're going to import them into D2L. So we're going to go into our course, we're going to choose more course admin, and then we're going to go to import export copy components. Now you're used to using this area to copy your course from another course. So this is where you copy your course from like a previous course. If you have a spring 2019, you're copying it to fall 2019, you're using this. This is copying things from within this D2L to other things within this D2L. But in this case, we're taking something completely external to D2L, these zip files, and putting them in. So in that case, we're importing a zip file completely out of D2L into um, our D2L. As a side note, you can actually export. So if you have this course completely built and you want to put it into another D2L system, you can actually click export. It will export the entire course, turn it into a zip file that you can import into another D2L system. So there's import and export, which is taking something that is not D2L and putting it in or taking something that is D2L and taking it out. Or there's copy components from another org unit, which is basically copying D2L to D2L within the same instance. So we're going to import and we're going to choose start. And remember that we're doing it chapter by chapter. So you can't do the whole zip file because it'll fail. You have to do it chapter by chapter. So I'll import chapter, import all components, give it a second, and it should import in. 
So once we get the note that it is imported successfully, I can import another package, upload, and then just grab the second um, chapter. Um, some courses are set up this way. Some test banks are set up this way to where it's chapter by chapter. Some of them have it to where it's all just one big one. So you really have to look at the zip file and see if it's a zip file within a zip file, you got to pull them out. If it's just one zip file all together, you can import it in. But you want to make sure to do that because if you have a zip file within a zip file, it's going to fail. You have to copy them out, put them on your desktop, and then, um, and then um, import them in individually. So once we import all of our zip files, we're going to go to quizzes. And then we're going to make a quiz. So what has happened is in the question library, so we go to quizzes and choose question library. And what has happened is those zip files have come in to um, our question library. So those have been imported in to our question library for us to use. So what we want to do now is make a quiz out of it. So we go to quizzes and then new quiz. And let's give it a name. We'll name it chapter one through chapter two because I'm gonna make this quiz made up of chapter one and chapter two questions. Then I add quiz questions. And then I can choose to import from the question library. Now often what people would like to do when they're using a test bank is to make a random pool or a question pool of um, questions. So since you are given probably a lot of questions, you might want to say, okay, well, I'm going to give them 50 questions on the exam, but it's randomly going to give them 20. So every student's going to get 20 questions randomly out of the 50 options. So a lot of people like to do that when they're using test banks because they're often given um, large amounts of questions. So let's do that. If we choose to do that, we're going to do new question pool. And let's just say chapter one. Then I browse question library. I choose my question set. So this was the one that I imported. I can choose to copy the entire set so I could check this and it would check everybody. Or I can check specific ones that I wanted. So I could check, you know, if I want to cherry pick which questions I want and I can choose the magnifying glass to do that. So I can either check all of them or I can cherry pick them. It's whichever you would like to do. Then I add those in. So all of these have been added in. You can tell what type of question they are. Some of these are true false. Some of these are multiple choice. So you want to be able to see. Now this one's a written, some of these are written responses. I might not want those because those you have to grade manually. So if that's the case, that's fine. I can just delete those out of my quiz. So I don't have the written responses. And I only have the auto graded, which would be the true false and the multiple choice. So then at the top, there's 109 questions. So maybe they're getting randomly 25. So each uh, quiz, each attempt is going to get 25 of the 109. So it's going to randomly pull those. And maybe I want those to be four points apiece, however I want those to be. I save. And then now you see I have that random pull. I can easily make another one. So I could do new question pull. And maybe I want to do this one with chapter two because I'm making the quiz is made up of both of them. Browse question library, and I'm able to do the same process. I'm able to find that question pool that I imported in. I'm e able to either cherry pick, or I can just select all of them if I want to use them all. Add them in, come down, make sure that I'm choosing the right ones. Maybe I want to get rid of the written responses because those are not ones that I want to use. So I can go through and edit them as much as I like. And then at the very top, I just want to choose. So this one is from 106. Maybe I want 25 from there. So four points a piece from the 25. Save that. Now we have two question pools. So I'll choose done editing questions. And now we're able to see that they're getting 25 from chapter one and 25 from chapter two. And so we're getting a total of possible um, 200, but they're actually getting 25 and 25. So they're getting, um, and they're four points a piece. So that's going to be um, 200 points. So maybe I want them 
one question per page. We always encourage that. There isn't a need to shuffle questions at this point because if you're doing a random section, it's randomly pulling 20 out of the 109 anyways. So there isn't a need to shuffle. Shuffle is only when you're giving them all the exact same questions is only when that is appropriate. You just want to come down and continue on. Make sure to disable right click, disable pager. Make sure under restrictions that you associate the start and end date. So there's always an end date for the last time they can take the exam. Um, you want to always display that in your oh. calendar. Make sure it is active. Put in the timing. And again, all of this is um, what you're used to doing, but put in timing, prevent the student from making further changes after they the time has run up. And again, always remember to make the grading sandwich. Super important. So associate, add in the grade item. Remember that the max points have to align with the um, possible total number of points. Make the grading sandwich, as I call it, the two pieces of bread and the meat. You want to make sure that that's set up so that it will push to, to the grade book. And attempts allowed. And then finally, submission views, what they're allowed to see once they submit the exam. So the default view, maybe yes, they can see the answers they answered incorrectly. These are the questions you missed. So all of that is somewhat of a review of how you set up the quiz, but um, the question pool might be new. Um, oftentimes people use these question pools as remediation or for study. So instead of allowing one attempt, often they will allow unlimited amount of attempts um, so that it goes into the grade book. Only the highest grade goes into the grade book, but they still get an unlimited amount of attempts. Sometimes you could have the first attempt go into the grade book, but then they can keep on taking it. It doesn't count for a grade, but it just allows them to um, practice. Or you could actually have it to where under assessment, you could not connect it to a grade item to where it doesn't send two to the grade book. So it doesn't count for a grade, but it still just allows them to repetitively take the quiz and get new questions and new questions from um, the quiz and from the question polls. So it's up to you. But that is how you can use a zip file to create a quiz within D2L. And again, you can always preview it just by going to drop down preview and then start quiz and you'll be able to see um, one attempt. Again, you're going to get randomly 25, but you would be able to see the questions and see the attempts as the student would.